Welcome to Pay to Play Report for Aberrancy the Stolen Sun. Aberrancy the Stolen Sun is a fantasy RPG game, and sadly, I cannot do this report the way I usually do it is when I uh, play it and kind of talk about it at the same time. The reason for it is because the version of my game that I have, for some reason, no longer has sound. In other words, I can play the game perfectly fine. I did finish the game, the last section of the game without any sound. I really wanted to finish the game. And it, that occurred after the latest patch on the May 31st that was downloaded onto the game. Now, I've seen people play it on Twitch since then, and I've seen people play the sound, so there must have been something wrong with my version of the game. And I did try to uninstall it, reinstall it, play around the sound settings, nothing helped. So I finished the game off as I could, and now I can't really get back into it because I was playing it through Xbox Game Pass for PC, and it's off that service right now. So. But it is available through GOG, Steam, and so on. So you can buy it uh, there uh, easily and no problems. For that reason, I'm, yeah, I'm using a captured footage that I have captured throughout the whole playthroughs that I did of the game as I was playing it. And I'm now gonna be using this as well as I'm using a, pretty much a looping soundtrack, the main theme of the, uh, the game behind me as a type of a, well, to just to provide the sound to the whole situation. Because I have to mute the videos that I captured since otherwise you're gonna hear two me speak at the same time as I'm speaking right now about something as well as in the game, as in the actual footage that I captured because I was speaking at, at that time. But I really want you to hear the music because I also enjoyed the music. Like I said, this is an old style fantasy uh, RPG. And what I mean an old style is that it's actually a fantasy RPG done in a certain older version. I'm gonna show you exactly what, what I mean by that. Here we are, it's uh, slightly into the game, and you can see the mini map, you can see it's type of a grid square of a mini map. And why is this important is because, and it kind of uh, was a bit confusing to me at first, but you'll see me as I move around the map, I'm always moving forward or backwards or right or left. I cannot move diagonally, I could not move by diagonally at the very beginning. And that was kind of a, a bit of a confusion to confuse to me because I was trying to figure out why you know the key movement is so weird. But once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy, and you, you're gonna get used to it. And there you go. We, uh, as you go around, you're gonna be exploring dungeons. The way again, the older games used to do it. And here we are. We as we get attacked by the skeletons. Well, in this case, we uh, wanted to them to attack us. And as you in the, any engagement you're gonna have a military, like a, a pretty much a fight engagement, you can use your abilities. I tried to use poison on the skeletons, it did not work because they're of course immune to poison. I, and you can see the, when you actually aim on the skeletons with different abilities, when you select the abilities, they'll tell you what they say, what they care, what the enemies are immune to. It says poison immune, but I did not read it at the time, and I was much using what I was. Uh, I was trying to use poison. And I have two people in my party, eventually you will get to have four people in your party at any time. But there's more other characters, but the four, maximum is four in a party. So you do select which ones you want for different situations, you're able to swap them out. And they all have their own different abilities and different uh, attacks. You have also the melee attacks, you have range attacks, you have different spell-like attacks. And you're choosing that, so it seems similar to any other RPG that you're going to be playing. Uh, you have played in that way it's uh, pretty straightforward this is a turn based each each of course uh, enemy and you take a turn uh, attacking depending on your initiative in this case so here we are uh, you're gonna take, go back and forth with the skeleton I'm, I'm using using range attacks because range attacks are better at the distance about but you still have a chance to miss so you can see their hit chance appearing while the melee attacks do hit better at the closer distances, the distances are denoted by those uh, yellow, green and blue lines that you see there. The further away, the, you know, the less you can do. Once you complete, you complete the fight, you get all these uh, benefits, you get loot uh, that you can use it to put on your, on your characters. And you're gonna get uh, sometimes a bit of a banter talking about the characters, uh, but about the enemies. And here, there's another section to it. This is called a journal. In the journal, you get to read and familiarize yourself with different enemies. So here we are. It's showing me exactly what the different, you know, different enemies are that uh, that I'm reading right now about the ones that I have so far encountered. There's going to be more of them. You can read about locations, about your companions, about the items that you pick up. And this it items are very specific and will be very important. So we'll we'll talk about that later. 
There's also additional stuff here. This is your uh, active quest. This is your completed quest. This section will allow you to read any scrolls or any type of notes that you find along the way. And this is what something called the dialogue. This is all the dialogue that occurs in the game is captured here. So if you need to go back and review something, it's all possible there. And that dialogue includes anything that's not only the dialogue that occurs between the characters uh, special cutscenes, but it will also be the dialogue that occurs as you go along in the difference it, in, as you talk, the characters will do banter. And I will talk about that a bit more. And so we are back in a fight here. The enemies have a different, again, similar to RPG style of other abilities. You have our ability for enemy to taunt. So here it is, the character is taunting me. So I can only, I can only attack that character. And I can use a. Right now, because my abilities are mostly useless, let's say in this case, I haven't developed many of them. But eventually, you're gonna have way, way more as, as such, and you're gonna be able to use them in a very different fashion to compound them. They, they will add on to different to, to each other and different effects. And you're gonna also have more different. NPCs, now, well, not NPCs, well, I guess your companions that will be also have different abilities and that will also allow you to put them together and add them all together in a different type of effects again. Now, there's not many much uh, complicated situations here in terms of uh, how you can put these uh, uh, effects together. It's a simple thing that the certain things will linger and so on, and certain things will allow you to deal with damage. To everybody so that that kind of abilities are, are available so there's only one enemy left so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, finish this enemy off um, it's gonna I'm guessing gonna take a while if you're gonna keep on missing but it's one of the things that will happen that you do miss uh, enemies or the enemies can evade or they can even block and uh, again eventually you also acquire similar abilities depending on your gear and this is something that we're gonna talk about right now, right after this fight, is the, actually the gear that you can get in the game. So again, we got uh, items, we got gold, the gold that we used to buy things. And here it is, the game is, is because it's the first time I'm leveling up, the game is telling me, hey, by the way, you gotta level up, here's how you do it. The game will also put in the, the journal, there's gonna be instruction notes about how to do everything, in case you forget something and so that you can always refer back. And here we are. Now, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna open up uh, the actual well i'm gonna open up i'm gonna try to open up the journal and there you go you have a character and as you can see there's the items here's the inventory screen uh, the equipment that i can put on and as i'm trying a different different equipment uh, you can see the values on the top here they get green pluses and minuses so this is attack this is defense this is other different parameters that are also influenced by the items and as you're putting them up you can see how much they affect your characters What's the benefits? There are also, besides you know the usual, right now we see simple attack and uh, defense items, but there will be items that will grant you immunity or not that much immunity, but resistance against uh, different attacks. You, you have items that will give you certain benefits, such as extra uh, damage and so on. And there we in the talent tree. This is a simple talent tree. Here you pick the talents as you go along, you level up, you'll be able to pick up the talents depending on which talents you want. Let's say you want this talent, you have to pick the talents from here and so on. Now you have the main talents here that I'm looking at. Overall, you get to look at them, you get to pick what you want and uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm, uh, I'm slowly reading through it and seeing what exactly that I want uh, to use. And if I'll, I decide on, let's say, this one, so I unlock it, and that will become available for me to use during battles. There's a limit how many towns you can use during battles, um, and there's also a cooldown down timer on them. So, now, additionally, you have also this uh, things uh, below them. These are little things that you can see here uh, as I'm going through them. They increase certain parameters of the spells that you're using or in case, at this case I'm using the fire uh, fire damage bonus or they uh, increase your attribute points or they do something else uh, additionally so here we are now in the attribute section which you get uh, to add uh, attribute points as you level up and as you do so you will see which uh, parameters will be get affected for your character and as you're adding up behind much now, after the latest patch, also the values above here will get the same treatment. So as you will be adding stuff on, to, on here, it will get reflected here as well to kind of give you a general sense of idea how much it's affecting your character in, in terms of values of attack, defense, and everything else. So, 
you get uh, kind of the this uh, interesting uh, points here. Now, as I'm going to be wandering around here, I'm trying to walk around the whole map because it's very important because you can find different items that you might probably find uh, such as the chest here, but I can't access it. Eventually, I will find a way to, to raise these bars, open them up, and so I can get to the chest. This is how you do it. You have to explore the whole map. And this is, again, that thing about the, this game being in that uh, of an older RPG style where you have to do that, you have to explore every location because the game will not completely 100% tell you where everything is. It doesn't show that on the minimap, there's no icons. And in this case, the minimap again is a grid. It's in, uh, harking back to the old style situations where back in the day people used to draft the actual maps using graphing papers. And here I found some firewood. Firewood is important and I will explain it later on why. It, that and used to graph back in the day the actual maps on the graphing paper because the minimaps did not exist in the games. And in this game you can actually turn off the minimap if you want to for harder difficulty. I decided not to remove anything because any no settings that allowed me for harder difficulty were pretty much removing uh, conveniences that I really wanted to have. So I played it uh, and that way on the normal difficulty but I did play it through the whole thing and like I said, you do have to walk around because you, well, you'll find some different items like here. You have a scroll, you have a, you, you also have a, a weight here, and you can use that to open different secret areas. There's a lot of secret areas. I think I found most of them. I did not find every them, all of them. I believe because I've, in the end, the last two maps I did find there were few areas I could not seem to have unlocked. I could not get into. So there must have been some secret areas that I did not pick up. I didn't find some secret objects that I didn't find to unlock those areas. Not sure how to unlock them, and but that time I was running out of time because the game would be leaving the Xbox Game Pass for PC, and decided, okay, no, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead through the main story and uh, I'm gonna leave out those secretaries. They were not that uh, many that ever left, actually. I'll tell you that I did uh, kind of uh, went through all of them in the in that way. So let me jump a bit forward again. Uh, we we see another skeleton, but that's not the only. Uh, enemies that you're going to be facing. Now, before we talk about different enemies that we'll be facing, here's another thing that you're going to be seeing in this game, and this is, is this puzzles. There's a lot of puzzles in this game. This, uh, I'm trying to solve one right here uh, by pulling different levers. The, the puzzles in this game are get harder as you progress and there were situations where I did get stumped and the reason was it because I did not find something. Here's an example of a cutscene, you saw one and there's another one. There's most of the storytelling is done through this type of cutscenes where you know, two kind of cut out uh, characters will appear and they will do a little dialogue here and we'll, they'll talk and that's pretty much all. The, most of the main story elements will be told to you through this space. There will be also a dialogue that will be told to you differently. It will be when the characters just banter between each other, they do banter very interestingly and they do develop each other uh, very well, except your main character which is very blunt, but that, that's you being, so that's I'm guessing you should, you know, you're not gonna have much of development since it's your main character, is you, you're playing from a first per person perspective in that way, you sh there shouldn't be much of development there. But when it comes to all, all other characters, very little banter is great, I really appreciate it. And there's a certain amount of even a fourth wall breaking that's, uh, that never took me out of the game itself. So I never lost suspension of disbelief, but I did chuckle about it. And that actually did contribute to immensely to the enjoyment as a game I had. So there's the two slots here available right now that uh, I don't have a character in, but I will in the future. Now back to the puzzles and what I was talking about, the puzzles before, you know, I saw that it was a cutscene section to explain you the cutscenes, is that the, there are different puzzles, so you do solve them different, in different ways. Um, they, they, in that way they're pretty interesting, but what happens is, is that you have um, situations where you do get stumped. And the reason I got stumped was because I couldn't find a certain clue that uh, I was looking for. and that happened much later on in the game. At the beginning, it's not it's not as bad that I had, but I had very few puzzles that really really stumped me that way. Most of the puzzles, uh, most of the times, the puzzles are solvable, and if you cannot solve it, the, the characters will do a bit of a banter or a bit of fourth world, fourth world breaking, where they will try to offer you clues to say what you should be doing in order to solve the puzzles. So. That way, again, it's. I don't think it's really that that hard. 
to solve them and especially if you pay attention need to pay attention to the dialogue and I was rushing through the game it took me about 24 hours to finish the game and I would say if I went 3d properly I would have been maybe a few more hours so maybe two more hours more if I also to look for other things that are available in the game and what I'm hoping right now is that this is a section of the game where I do get in a fight. Yes, I do get in a fight with a different type of enemy. And this is a different type of enemy that you usually don't see in the fantasy genre, right? You usually get this in the usual fantasy genre, like you have skeletons. That's the standard. In this case, I'm not having the hard time against this enemy, so I'm using my new skills. But usually, it's a you know the fantasy genre is mostly human elves and, and dwarves, right? And plus works. So other bad guys, right? And so that's your standard fantasy trope genre. In this case, this is a game that was created by the Central European team, and uh, more like Central Eastern European. Uh, I pick up fire, but actually this is very important. I will get back to you about that. And because this is a Central European team that developed this game. They used their local mythology, legends, and folk tales to create this world. So very much uh, the same that this world has always been there. Like the uh, Operencia is name of this fantasy world that is told in the legends of that region, and so they try to recreate it using that, and which makes it very much unique. So you saw me fighting the, what looks like was very much a giant frogs, which is a kind of interesting enemy in, in itself. So from that, I would say perspective, this was a. Uh, very unique. There's gonna be other unique five enemies. I would fight the uh, mushrooms, like a giant mushrooms. You do get to fight them. You get to fight other type of characters that are not uh, strictly would be found in the regular fantasy tropes. There was, there was one enemies that are like a type of shamanistic uh, enemy that's uh, very interesting in its own way. That's much later on in the game. Really, really love the way they were done. So all that uh, I found very very interesting, very unique, and I kind of like the situations where you do get into things like that. Here we have a situation where there's a battle that's an ambush, in other words, you ambush the enemy, then you, you, they are, in this case, despite what you did, in terms of, uh, what you had in terms of initiative, you usually go and attack first, and uh, you see there's advantages to that because I get to wipe out the enemy pretty much very quickly. And now I run out of my uh, usual spells, so now I have to go the usual way to, to attack them but that uh, that was again the storytelling itself is something that's very fun and you know what i would actually let's move on to something to, to another uh, example of it of the game it's slightly further ahead uh, i would not that much further ahead but here we are in here I am trying to map out the area and I'm looking at things and here there's something that are uh, very important in the game it's called a campfire and the reason for importance of the campfire is that this is the area where you will be able to save the game now on the hardest difficulty that's the area you only can save the game uh, on the normal difficulty when you quit you do save the game the game will save and there's also, also uh, save points available so if you die you, you revert to save points while on the hardest difficulty you revert to the campfire so, and then all the progress since of course uh, safe point of sense campfire will be lost in my case I did not uh, do that again because to me it was uh, having safe points was convenient uh, uh, situation and I generally did not have uh, too many times that I need really need to use a safe uh, to use a safe point to come back and attack here I am exploring the area because you never know what you find like there you see if you found gold it kind of a blends in but it's also a bit shy so that it's in this in a way it's easier for you to find but it doesn't mean that it's easy to find all the objects sometimes you do have to go in and look to make sure you find all the secrets all the items that's why I'm doing all this extra walking around and walking through in, in this case to make sure that I found everything in this area and I can move on to the next area right so Back to the actual story. The story is pretty simple. It's a usual good versus evil. There's nothing really deeper than that. There's nothing. There's not really question that ponders it, that, that leaves you pondering. The stories and morals are very straightforward, and it was. It, I would love to have a better, better, a much more deeper type of a story here. But this is, a, you know, what I got was uh, fun enough for me. Now, what I will be doing right now here is using an, a, an item. An item which is a shovel here that you find and you use that to find a hidden treasure. 
Sometimes it's vital for the story, sometimes it's not. It will all depend uh, on the situation, but you do have to find it. And uh, here it is, a, the game actually is, is uh, kind of a give me an advice saying where it is that I should be looking. Here it is again, says uh, zero meters, that means it's right there under you. So there I will dig it up and I'll, you know, I'll find some items here. And as you can also see, I have already three characters in the party now. Eventually get more. And when you open up the campfires, actually the illustration will also change as you get more characters, the more they will be sitting around, around the campfire. And uh, even though you have four people in your party for fights purposes, it, uh, it does not affect the fact the storytelling, so in other words, the characters will still banter even the ones that are not involved in the party right now. They still banter with each other and that will still continue on and all in that way, so you're not losing anything out of the story depending on who you choose. It only affects your combat abilities. Now, back to the items. Uh, the items you can uh, select by uh, when you are in the actual game, not in this uh, character screen, so you, but in your actual game, you spend, when you go out and you if you press control you'll be able to select different items so eventually you know right now I have only shovel eventually get more there's a different items so the shovel does dig things up there will be items that allow you to lift things and so on there's an interesting variety of them and you will be using them to solve different puzzles what's uh, great about these items is the fact that as you will go be going along on different maps you will discover areas that you cannot access yet the reason for you for that is because you don't have the proper item so as you will be discovering items you will be coming back to the older areas using campfire that's how you, you can move between the older areas and you were in older areas and as you move to, between them to be able to access other hidden areas that you could not find you could not access before so that's how you reveal more and more secrets and here i'll be trying to uh, solve a puzzle it'll take me a while because i'm going to be trying to force it and then eventually realize that i need to go look for clues so from that perspective it's very interesting the game again the game itself because on any map you might find things that might be useful in the future or it might be useful in the previous maps and so you'll be coming back and trying them out i really like that idea again it harkens back to the older rpgs where that was a the case that was a situation where you had to sometimes backtrack and do because you had to use items from the previous uh, uh, use, use items that you found currently in the previous locations to open them open them up further Overall, back to the, what I was talking about the story, I really like the story, it was a unique take and all that stuff. The story kept me going, it was well paced, if it wasn't, I would not have played this game so long, I would have decided to do my impressions video on it, I would have called it off because you know, I was spending a lot of time trying to get through it before it would leave the Xbox Game Pass for PC. But in the end, because it doesn't have that deeper, uh, kind of a big, bigger mission question that it leads to me thinking about it, it has a usual good versus evil story. It, uh, all, the, all the characters have their own personal stories, but again, it's also pretty straightforward. There's nothing that leaves me thinking about things. I would say it's a good game. If it had a, that deeper questions, deeper um, ideas, I would have moved it into a great game category easily. From execution point, uh, it, I love this game. In terms of game mechanics, everything I loved it. Uh, you know, the, even the times when I got stumped on the, on the puzzles, it was fine. I was fine with it in the end because once I solved it, you keep on going. I'm like, oh, everything else is great. And the fact that this is such a unique uh, world that was uh, carved by the developers with all these unique enemies, you get to fight the dragons. Besides, you know, the frogs and the, the giant frogs, the giant mushrooms, you get to fight the dragons. You get to fight different uh, other creatures, and. You, you got these different spells such as you know you have a giant sword that drops on the enemies you got flying hammers type of thing so all that combined with a unique setting with a, that fourth wall breaking that is done so very well that does not affect the actual narrative and they're taking you out of the narrative when they do the fourth wall break and the fact that the game plays like a fairy tale because the fairy tales that I read, uh, the, um, I know the Russian fairy tales, uh, you know, the, the, both the folklore, the folk tales uh, and versions, and the ones that were written by, by Pushkin. I read the Brothers Green fairy tales. I read other other fairy tales, and so to me, this combination of all these things was just great. I loved it, and this is what I think makes this game sub zero in my. I, when, I, when I'm thinking about it, you know, in terms of coolness. 
I would say this is a Sub-Zero cool game. It's a good Sub-Zero cool game. So here I access another different area. And uh, what I'm going to leave you with is that I'm going to say thank you for watching and uh, listening to, uh, to me. And please, if you if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, you can say you didn't. You know, you can press dislike. Well, that's it for me.